Are you serious? Hi, Marcus Bronzy here from How To Kill An Hour. This is like the intro before the intro for this episode. Uh, because we've got the guys from Top Gear in this episode, so I figured I'd talk to you about something that is car related now we've recently killed some time with the out now the out is a new premium car rental service powered by jaguar land rover and it's based in london at the moment hold tight other cities in the uk but it provides a hassle-free experience for you to basically have a high-end luxury suv delivered to your doorstep so with the click of a button or a few clicks in the app you get a premium car delivered to your doorstep within three hours of booking yeah as quick as that and uh yeah you get the car get to drive it around and bring it back now i had the choice of the range rover evoke land rover discovery uh sport jaguar i-pace i went for the range rover sport plug-in ev that's because yeah i want to ball out in a car but i also want to feel like i'm being a bit green so what's cool about that car is you can actually charge it up and get about 30 miles of pure electric vehicle time to cruise around town in but when you get on the motorway you're not going to be stuck looking for a charging point when you, when you're out and about basically so i pretty much opened up the app picked the car that i wanted um step two you put in the dates that you want to have the vehicle for when you want them to deliver it specifically everything's included with the delivery as well so you get fully comprehensive insurance additional drivers refueling at the market rate if you don't fill out the vehicle before returning it we'll get it. it can happen mud and snow tires are standard on all cars unlimited mileage full breakdown cover and land rover roadside assistance you get the sat nav and in car apps in the cars anyway so you don't have to worry about those being added uh you can get booster seats uh congestion charge is covered too i didn't know that actually until i, I actually did do congestion charge on a vehicle but it's covered for that as well um you can get bike racks dog guards and snow chains also i mean for me it was the fact that you have the european driving as well you're insured to drive in europe too which was a good look so if you want to go for a road trip you really can nip to france for the day i hopped in the car and was like right i want to do a road trip i don't want to go for like a mad like you know long drive i want to go for a nice reasonable road trip with some country roads so we headed up just outside of london to an area called denham i rode there with gadgets boy gadgets john and we went for a a pretty cool road trip we went for a helicopter ride across london to take some photos and it was really cool rolling there in 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 the range and um one loads of space to put all of our kit in it two just a luxurious drive when you're driving a high-end car like that when you're doing long drives it just doesn't like an hour or two just melt away do you know what i mean and i just want to say like it's really simple you can download the app the out from your app store or you can go to the out.com and that's what i did and it was a really simple booking experience so if you fancy a luxury car for a few days for as simple as i think it's as cheap as 150 quid a day pretty much depending on 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 your three-day rental that you get out there um yeah check out that out all right i'll be marcus bronzy that was the intro before the intro uh before we have the top gear guys on the show uh because basically they do drive luxury cars but they also smash cars to pieces as well uh but anyway right let's get on with the real intro of the show cheers Hello, this is How To Kill An Hour. My name is Marcus Bronzy. And we've got a nice little treat for you in this episode. It's a little bit of a shorter episode, but I think you'll forgive us for the quality that is here because we managed to have an exclusive chat with the guys from the brand new series of Top Gear, which is out on the 26th of January, 2020. So if you're listening to that before then, make sure you put it in your EPGs, on your TVs, on your Sky Qs, whatever. Set an alarm on your phone so you can check out the new season because it's going to be absolutely crazy. At the premiere, they showed some <laughs> out-of-this-world stuff that is happening in this season. And the great thing about Top Gear, I'll say before we get into this, is yeah, it's a car show, but it's not a car show. It's an entertainment show. And it's all about them the guys having a great time checking out brand new vehicles yes but it's also about the experiences that they go through whilst traveling the world in their vehicles and i just want to say the chemistry between them all like i mentioned in the interview is better than ever and you get a little taster of that when i sat down in leicester squares odeon 
hours before they premiered the brand new season of Top Gear to the World. So without further ado, here's myself sitting down with Paddy McGuinness and Chris Harris from Top Gear. Got his Rolex. What did you, what did you drive? Rolex there. I came in the back of a Mercedes S-Class. Oh. I was really treated this morning and it was, I like going in the back of an S-Class. There's a lot of labour oh. in there. So I had, I had two hours of the cricket watching us finally beat South Africa, um, which was lovely. Then I wanted the journey to end and it kept going. I tell you what I like, the back of as we're t- talking wanky, <laughs> wanky being driven about things you like being in the a back seven of what? series of who a seven series You're, no mate that sort of seven oh, series rides too hard no i tell you what you've got more, leg, more you've got more leg room not a problem and for you've me, got Pat. a lot more and you've got a lot more going on in the back of one of them i think i like them well you want toys do you i like toys yeah i like all that i like the old wireless chargers and all that carry on lovely That's touch. Between a professional car test is i understand the back of an s-class is better ride better engineering yeah, exactly stuff yeah. that stuff that people are not interested when they buy one Mm. Are you more of a guy is, when you is. get in a car, Paddy? If there's buttons, you've got to press each of the I like, buttons and find I, out what I, they do. The first thing I do when I get in a car is I see where I can charge the phone up easily and where the coffee cup holders are. That's that's a big thing for me. That There's nothing worse than you're in a car and you get in and you go, where can I put the cup? What about button etiquette, though? Because when I was a kid, if I got into my father's car, yeah. if I touched the button without permission... It's basically a little clip. It was, you know, this is my Off car. I'm in, I'm in control. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> but, but, so I, if people get in the car next to me and I'm driving and they just get in and just, to, you know, change the temperature, I'm like, whoa, 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 it's my car. Yeah. Yeah, you don't do yeah. that. Yeah, I wouldn't get in someone else's car and mess about with all that carry on. I'm on about if I was getting in driving it, them is the first things I look for. All Cup the holder. Yeah. It's important, Chris. Listen, these days, your car. You're in it pretty much all the time, aren't you? And when you're going to work, no one's got any time anymore, so you do everything while you're driving. So you've got to have a, your cup holder. You've got to be charging your phone up and everything else. So you wouldn't drive a Ferrari F40 because it doesn't have a cup holder? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying cup holders are very important. Right. So, Series 28, guys. Yeah. How are you feeling? Well, look where we are. Yeah. You know, it's... It, I mean, Should we describe you know, where we are for yeah. listeners of the podcast, yeah, actually? Yeah, we're, in, uh, see we're in Leicester Square, uh, Audion. Yep. Uh, home to um, massive premieres over the years, like we were talking before, all the Marvel stuff, Star Wars, James yeah. Bond, and no Top Gear. <laughs> we are dragging it down. <laughs> we are dragging it down big time. But it's you know it's it shows you the size of the show, really. You know it's it's we've just been doing interviews upstairs with like uh, you know press from South Africa and China and Poland, and it's just it's it's mad. Yeah, you know, it's mad. When you're talking to these people and, you know, it's it's just it's just bonkers, but it's all good. It's all good. I'm looking forward to tonight. Yeah. Chris? Yeah, we've we've got um got some good stuff coming up. We're really pleased with what we've produced. It's a it's a, a usual mixture of top gear mayhem, everything from lobbing cars off dams to some serious car testing, but also racing supercars against fast jets and yeah, I, I look back at the last six months. It's been a bit of a whirlwind. Mm. We've crammed a load in, yeah. but I'm proud of what we've produced. I don't normally say that either, but I am proud of this lot. It looks really good. And you two are looking like you're both injury-free. You managed to get through what <laughs> looked like last last yeah. season as injury-free. Not so much emotionally. Really? I was very injured emotionally, <laughs> but uh, physically kind of okay, really. Mm. I mean, I'm surprised Flint's off still with us. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he spends most of his time trying to kill himself, and uh, he survived this time. He had a couple yeah. of close scrapes. He went off the end of a runway, lying on what can only be described as a skateboard with a rocket attached yeah. to it. And as, as I saw his legs start to bounce when he hit the grass, I thought, that doesn't look good. Yeah, yeah there's a picture knocking around, I think. There's a green sports car and, and some sort of device that someone's You were in the green on. one, weren't you? I was, yeah. in a, I was driving a shed at the time, it, 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 an actual garden shed. Yeah. Uh, Fred was on this skateboard come rocket thing, and uh, what were you in? Skyline with 2,000 horsepower. There oh, you go. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, there you go. So, uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm thinking of getting a sweepstake going in the office about um, how Flintoff's going to die. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be a bungee yeah. rocket thing. Yeah, we're going to, you know, but I'm going to get a few quid on it. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't really do fear in the way that we all do fear. Yeah. He's, he's wired up differently, which is perfect for us. I mean, he was employed as a lab rat, and he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's executing that perfectly. I mean, he dragged you into a few things last season. Uh, there was that, you know... The that finale. hearse. Oh, oh, God, that, wasn't, oh, that God. wasn't a great I mean, moment, was there it? Was, I mean, no. the hearse, I mean... Yeah, that, yeah. that, that was... Uh, I think that was that's partly his fault, I've got, I've got to be honest, because Fred's one of them people were... 
You know when you go, someone tells you to put the hand in a fire and you go, you wouldn't do that. Yeah. Well, Fred would. He was that kid. At yeah, so school, he's yeah. going a bit faster, Fred, and yeah. he's like, gets all excited. And the next thing we know, we're upside down and the roof's crushed and we're all trapped in the car. Uh, so, and I'd like to think he'd learned his lesson from that, but I don't think he has. No, he yeah, but no. before we worked with Fred, we never had a thing called an extraction unit. <laughs> now we do. <laughs> But you had him jumping up on cliffs, though, didn't you, in the last season as well? That was, I mean, that's one thing, Chris. When you said, I don't like this, I am not feeling this, that kind of conveyed how scary it was. And Freddie's like, oh, yeah, go on, I'll have a go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, he, he doesn't really view it the way we do. It's quite strange. I've never met anyone like that. I thought I, thought I knew fearless people until I met Fred. No, but I think Fred's one of them where he, 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 he kind of thinks, because it's on telly. He thinks it's it's safe. <laughs> so he go, oh, it's all right, it's on telly. I'm like, no, no, but there's still like a 500 foot drop yeah, there, Fred. Yeah. That doesn't change with telly. They don't, when you fall off the cliff, go, caught, and the car just, just hovers and then they put it back on. Yeah. It's still real, but in his head, it's on telly, so it'll be fine. Yeah, the when you see later on the Premier with this bungee jump stunt we've done with him, I mean, blimey, O'Reilly. But there were, I was there that day, there were a few moments where even he thought this is not too funny and he wanted us to get on with it and get it <laughs> yeah. done there were a few moments yeah. where even he did yeah i mean that some of that stuff looks scary so i look forward to seeing that in the next season as well also the chemistry is is looking stronger than ever i'll be honest though chris i feel like you get bullied a little bit sometimes by freddie <laughs> i mean we've seen him almost rub some mud on you we've seen him slap a melon almost. on your head yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh no, yeah, he does. He does. Yeah, put a melon on your head. Even I think his balls connected with your head. Yeah, what yeah, other parts I, of I, his body are going to be touching in the next I, season? How many other people have been tea bagged yeah. by an international rounder in Ethiopia? They look sweaty <laughs> as well in that. As yeah. You look pretty warm. And he's, he's getting old as well, so they're yeah. starting to really, <laughs> they're really, really yeah. droopy. Yeah. Um, no, I, <laughs> look, the whole, the whole, the whole That's bullying thing just makes me laugh. When you, when you're the small man, whichever group of people I'm in, I'm always the smallest, and the small one always takes a bit you get used to that i like it i thrive on it mm. because ultimately i'll always win because i'm not as stupid as him so i'm 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 very i'm very happy with the balance and i expect to get a bit of grief i get my own back a bit in this series as well oh God, does so, so um yeah don't worry about it i'm certainly not the put upon one in this at all at all i mean look at my ears you can't see them on the podcast but i've got normal ears spock to my left here hasn't got normal ears i'd rather be small with normal ears than bullying with those bullying Ear shaming, I think they call that. <laughs> it is, it is. That'll be that's a new one on Twitter. That ear you're, you're ear shaming me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Paddy, um, do you feel like your driving's got better now, rolling around with Chris? Um, I think, like anything, when you when you're doing something a lot, you get you get better at it. Um, you say that, but I've been I've done two studios with you, and you still say I'm shit. Yeah, apart from that, apart from, <laughs> apart from you're presenting. <laughs> but other than that, yeah. But I think, yeah, because, you know, I, I always ask Chris about certain things when we're driving and what have you, or about, you know, taking corners faster. And that's, you know, you'd be daft not to pick his brains for that. But also as well, we have a lot of pro, pro drivers you never see on camera who do, you know, they do, they, they're fantastic drivers. They do so much stuff outside of top gear so yeah if you're not picking their brains when you've got a chance you know you you've been a fool to yourself so yeah i think things have definitely improved i can be a bit glib at this point and say that they both can drive pretty damn well they're much better than the average driver um and you couldn't really do this job if you were totally incompetent behind the wheel it mm. wouldn't be possible although having said that there's probably been previous top gear presenters that have been hopeless behind the wheel. <laughs> oh, <I don't> know. <laughs> oh. shots fired oh. <laughs> controversial <laughs> Yeah, do you feel like your studio game or your banter's better now rolling with these guys? No, no, my, my, my banter. Do you know banter, what a bomb is yet? No, no, oh, no. Okay. no. He doesn't know what so, oh, is. so, oh, so my, my um, yeah. yeah, so my my chat's terrible according to Paddy, and right. the studios when we get when we prepare ourselves for the studios, the chat I get, we have a run through beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> And um, quite often in the run through, I'll have a little snipe, and he always pauses and goes, "You complete mug. Wait for when we're recording it." Yeah. And he always standard line is another great line that you didn't deliver on camera. Yeah, he does all his best stuff <laughs> yeah. off camera, and I'm like, well, when it's on, that helps all the trip. <laughs> time. Yeah, do it when that light goes red. Do it then. But he, and when when it does go red, he just stands like that. Oh. Hate it. And Absolutely like, hate what it. Are you doing? I want to sign a contract where I don't do the studio. I just <laughs> cock about outside in the cars. The yeah. studio, the studio is just dead. Afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, what's different this time around then? A lot of people want to know what's different. Every We're doing season. it in the nude. 
Great. Full series. Ratings. Balls out the lot. Yeah. Um, what are I think, those? I think... Trainers. I think the, what, you got, what you got to remember it with Chris and all this is yeah. the, this is I'm glad he said that because this is one of the things when what happens when you work with Chris Harris when you for instance when we're traveling anywhere yeah. in the world right Chris is a kind of guy who pulls you up and has a go at you because you've got a suitcase right now that's in a you're on a plane you've got a suitcase he goes look at look at Mariah Curry with his suitcase. I'm like, that's what people take with them on holiday, Chris. No, they don't. They take well, a small he's, bag. He's literally a Tesco shopping bag or waitrose in Chris's case uh, with a pair of underpants in it. That's him. Scandalous. Uh, travel, travel light and yeah. be wieldy. Then you're manageable. You can you can react to situations. You turn up with two suitcases, load what? of white linen. I mean, honestly, it's like Beyonce. Uh, uh, and lad like yourself uh, as well. Uh, I mean, oh, don't, that was a, that don't, was a long start. time ago. If you're going on holiday, you've got a suitcase. Yeah, don't got, tell me one. you've not got I've, a I've suitcase. Got the one case, yeah. Listen, he pulled me up when I first met him because he saw me put aftershave on. I'm like, <laughs> Chris, this that? is just a Why normal... Do that? This is just what people do. No, it's not. One bath a week and travel light. <laughs> uh, one bath a week. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What's, what's Freddie like? He looks like he's a bit of a, a, a classic sportsman now. Yeah, when it comes to his kind of etiquette. He's, you, I keep me on him because he's very. He has a style team, Fred, doesn't he? What? He has like a guy. Well, he's got, he's he's got his own ball. fashion line, Flint off by Giacomo. Giacomo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's, he's, always always getting his, he's always getting his uh, touched off by yeah, someone yeah. and what have you. So yeah, he's. Uh, Let's say Fred has bought into the sartorial side of life. He likes <laughs> to look good. Um, I don't really understand Bad any of that. Footwork. What's wrong with his footwell? He's got big feet, hasn't no, he? No, but some of the stuff he wears in studio, these night trainers he wears with the big, like, aluminous balls underneath and all, I don't get that. Well, I mean, I, I, mean, that's, yeah. I mean, I've got to say, Paddy, you've got a fancy pair of kicks on right now. Yeah, but now. they're just Those a white, are... they're just a white I mean, pair. They're just, just they're, 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 yeah, but what I'm saying is there's nothing there going on. They're just there. That that is, can you lift, can you lift up your foot to the camera? Is, I think on the bottom of it. There is. you go. There. Oh, there we yeah, go. Yeah, that's, okay. that's, that's underneath. What make are they? That's underneath. That's underneath. That's just underneath. I've never even heard of them. That's a lady's dad. That is a lady's dad. You know you can buy lubes with like all spikes on the front and all that. That's not me. Terrible. Just a nice, simple pair. I like that. But uh, Fred le- wears these ones like where they've got like these mad gel things underneath and all that carry on. It must be what, just air bubbles. Is that what they are? Yeah, I have not. He's big into those. <laughs> he's loves but, the but they air make bubbles. him even taller because he lies yeah. about his height. I've never met anyone that lies about their height downgrading it. He says really? he's six yeah. foot four. He's not. He's a good I six said, six. I, I said to him once, uh, "What are them?" He went, "Yeezys." I went, "You're forty two. I went, you're not, don't be giving it Yeezys at that age. Also, the way these two say Yeezy, them Yeezys. The Yeezys, Yeezys. I'm like, you can't be wearing them at your age. <laughs> Have you not picked up any greater Manchester or Lancashireisms then, hanging around these two guys? I'm, I'm starting to understand the way they talk a bit. Um, I love the fact that when the show goes out in America, they have subtitles. I'm not kidding. They both what, have subtitles. Sub- they have subtitles, yeah. those two, and I don't. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they, uh, no, it's impenetrable, isn't it? At times, you know, when he starts talking about that's reet, that is, that's reet. Yeah. It's it, when when we're ch- chatting, me and Fred, and then Chris pulls us up on something. When he does tell us how it's supposed to be done properly, I do go, "Oh yeah, I get that," but I, I take no notice of it. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, I think you the know, audience has grown massively north of Birmingham, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, massively. Yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah. brought a northern audience in. Good, too right, too right. Now, I feel like Freddie's not here, so he can't really defend himself. If he was here and I was going to ask him what he's looking forward to showing us in the next season, what do you reckon he'd say? I'm he's sure so. Yeah. Is he getting well, loves getting, loves getting, he oh, loves yeah. getting, yeah, yeah he he's the housewife's favourite. Yeah, he yeah. loves, uh, there's one particular scene where we're covered in lube. Right. Uh, and his T-shirt's all stuck to him and, and what have you, he gets out the car and takes it off. You know, I, mean, I in my eyes, we should have a slow-mo on that on that bit with some some Torso kind of cam. yeah with some, some, some a bit of sexy music going under there that'd be fantastic yeah he likes getting his top off does Fred I've still got my Christmas socks on look at those Jesus Christ wow look at those says a lot yeah well they're brilliant. clean brilliant see again when you go to the sock drawer you just go for the clean ones if there's one pair left you wear them don't you well usually if they're in a sock drawer they're clean anyhow so they're all clean in no, a sock drawer not, aren't they? you, you don't like... put dirty socks back in the sock no, drawer but you know the way when you're a student or like maybe 45 you put you put your socks in the corner of the room if you leave them there for a week they clean themselves you can put them back on again can't oh, you? that's oh. disgusting oh, that's just being God. a man do you oh, give them I, I do like once in a while you have to give them a sniff check though just yeah. to check the socks sniff check right, everything though. really most of the stuff he has but you see no you know 
coming into my way of thinking where you say that's disgusting. Yeah. You know, at first you were having a go about the suitcase with him, but now you see what he's like. You can see when we're travelling anywhere, this is the constant thing. I, I go, surely you must have a toothbrush. That's an essential, but he well, it, it just like... Gets a few blades of grass off the floor and flosses with them or something does Chris. Surely. You can see he's got his makeup person over there. <laughs> she's got P- Paddy's makeup lady. She, she's a really lovely woman, actually. And she's, you know, she's like his rock because she's around the whole time. But if you see what she puts on his face, it just says orange, more orange, really fucking orange. That's like that's her three options. House <laughs> <laughs> brick's the last one. Yeah, house house <laughs> brick. Two, two orange. Yeah. Terracotta yeah. right through to house brick. So um, we we lost a few cars last season. Mm. I mean, Paddy, you lost the Hearst, um, the Overtaker. Well, it was it was Fred who kind of lost yeah, that yeah. for me. But I thought uh, that was a loss for yourself. Cause yeah, I that yeah, was, yeah. That was your thing that you brought I, I, to the table. I really, do you know, it's it, it's a, a strange thing when we started doing the car up, and you're on it. You do forget what what it what what that car's job was in its original life. Yeah. And it was actually a lovely car to drive. You know, it really was. It's yeah. only when you kind of look in the rear view mirror, you go, oh, yeah, I remember what yeah. what, what was normally kept back there. And so breathe yeah. through your nose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, God. Exactly. It, really, it looked like it smelled like that. I don't know if yeah, people noticed, but there was like a kind of like mould kind of at the top of the car. And I could almost thing, smell that. The what thing was so wrong. Oh. There was the residue of death in there. Wow. I think uh, most cars, uh, challenge cars, any are, are, are old. So they're all a bit, yeah, musty yeah. and and smelly and what have you. So but the uh, Renault Four. So I rescued the Renault Four. <laughs> the Renault Four is on its way back. Oh, now. I was going to ask you about that yeah, yeah, because that was just, a very emotional. It's moment. just landed back in the UK, and right. I'm going to fully restore it. And, How uh, fucked is it? Um, it's rooted, but the shell's just about salvageable. So we're going to get it back together again. And I'm going to have a mint Renault Four. It'll owe yeah. me about ten grand at the end, and be worth about two. But but, yeah. but I will have another crap French car to go in my shed of crap French cars. The guy who we got it off was one of, he loved it. Oh, you know, God. It, I mean, it was a mint of that car. I'm saying these cars were, you know, that I think that was, there's one I've been in where, oh, actually, this is, this yeah. is in good nick. And it shows you, and it, it's genuine within the films, we don't want to wreck them. You know, we won't wreck them for wrecking them's sake. But some of the environments, the environments you're in, things are going to happen to the cars, you mm. know, and, they're going out in a bit of a hurrah, really. Yeah, you know, yeah. rather than just that's the bit that I find difficult because I'm sort of connected to that petrolhead audience. I get a load of grief saying, "Well, how dare you take a car like that? And it's unrepeatable. It should be preserved." But the you know the 106 Rally, okay, it it looked pretty good and cosmetically it was fine. But it had done 158 thousand miles. The mm. shell was a bit weak on it. It probably wasn't going to make another MOT. So either it just sits in someone's lot and rots and it just gets crushed or it gets sent out driving up a Himalayan mountain. I know what I'd rather have as a send off. Mm. It's a good way to go. It was a good, it was, I mean, it was a good way for it to go, but it, I felt quite, I didn't have a tear in my eye, but it looked like <laughs> as, um, you as, it up a little bit. One of the, guy, like, the guy you know. that was flying the drone that day or one of the, one of the cameramen, yeah. I think, just turned around to me after the, we had to leave it there and get on with the, get on with the journey. Okay, and so he you just, really did leave it. No, no, no. We, right. we left it there and went oh, yeah. back okay, two cool, days cool, later, cool. and then picked it up and brought it back. Yeah. There wasn't much traffic around; no one was going to nick it. <laughs> and um, and he, I just heard this bloke go, "Oh shit, they shot Bambi." He's got it about right. They shot yeah. Bambi. Yeah, so exactly. no, it's coming back. It's like well, it's back. It's landed in the UK, and I've now got a bit of a project on my hand to make it work again. Yeah, throw that up on social media. I think that will. I have done it. Really it's bought well. me. It's bought me less grief. Let's say. Okay, cool. I thought that it had ended up at Bewley. No, I, I've asked to buy it. Right, yeah, okay. The way it well, works with the Beeb is, you know, because of the unit, unit where the BBC is funded, they are yeah. BBC assets. So mm. I've had to buy it. Yeah. And then I have to go and restore it. It's a totally uneconomical exercise, yeah. but I really want that car. Passion though, isn't it? Fair yeah. enough. Someone's probably going to tell us to edit that bit out. Anyway, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> right. So um, before I let you get out of here, yeah. um, if there were three of you, I'd probably ask for three things from the, this, this season that you can tell us that we should look forward to, obviously without spoiling it. Mm. Do you want to go first, Paddy? Uh, <clears throat> roast guinea pigs in Peru. Okay, then. There you go. Deary me. Um, I would say the McLaren Speedtail racing an F-35 Lightning jet, because that was extraordinary. Pab filmed that with me, and we basically had our own private air show at RAF Marham, and it was un-effing believable, that machine. Oh, Which yeah, did. that as well. Yeah. <laughs> that, that and the raw skinny pig, yeah. And the yeah. raw skinny pigs. Yeah. All right, wicked. So bringing back a challenge that we haven't seen in the past. I mean, that we've seen in the past. Um, yeah, yeah. And then kind of taking it to the next level and, and that. Can we have another thing for Freddie? I feel like he's not here. What can we look forward to from Freddie? And apart uh, from the naked, well, the I mean, teeth. Yeah, teeth. Bowling. Uh, ginger. 
masquerading as strawberry blonde, tall, <laughs> throwing himself off a dam. Right. There's a lot of things. Great. Right. There's a lot of the, things. The one that people will talk about at the end of this series is him going off a dam. That yeah. is a real Top Gear moment. And I'm sad he's not here to talk about it, but honestly... Yeah. The, yeah, the seeds he had to do that because I stood there on the day watching him do it and every single moment was tempered with I'm really glad that's not yeah, me. Fred Claude Van Damme. Yeah, yeah. Well, you'll, yeah see, you'll see it tonight. You'll see, you'll it, see tonight. it tonight. That is a, that is a bit of a hurry one really yeah, yeah. yeah all right well i look forward to the screening thanks very much guys is that us yeah man a gentleman a gentleman thank you very much boss. Thanks, thank you cheers thank, thank you, you. Cheers. bye-bye so there you have it our nice little chat with chris harris and paddy mcginnis from the new season of top gear out on the 26th of january 2020 make sure you check it it's um like i said man great experience as you can hear the chemistry between them was amazing um my name's been marcus bronzy this has been how to kill an hour don't forget to check the whole video that we've put up on our YouTube channel. We've also shared it within our Facebook group at How To Kill An Hour. On all social medias, we're at How To Kill An Hour. I'm Marcus Bronzy, M-A-R-C-U-S-B-R-O-N-Z-Y. In the meantime, there's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. 